on your first lesson day, that was a big problem. Cause you, you got this thing, and you just wanted to grab it yes. any way that you wanted. And the teacher said, no, 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 no. You have to put, get your thumb and stick it, not maybe not in that little hole, but uh, over, over there. And then you put a cover your, I don't know, Suzuki does this, cover the, the little little eye there with your fingers yeah. then you have the rabbit so there here's my learned bow hold right? i can't play that way so it turns out the best the, the best approach for, for any technique is do something that's like what you do normally i'm going to pick up my coffee cup yes I do that actually. I <laughs> go from my left, my right hand with the cup. So basically, I just kind of, kind of grab it. The point of contacts are somewhere between the last joint and your fingertip. The idea is we're just going to notice what we do naturally, mm -hmm. and then not mess it up. Like I'm not going to hold my coffee cup. You know, that's weird. If I had to choose which only one finger to hold, hold in there. It would be like my, my middle finger, right? First finger would be a little out of balance. It, anyway, kind of proves that this is how your hand is balanced. This is the basic connection to the bow is your thumb and middle finger or, or just grabbing it. So that proves like you actually have to have an, exactly a natural position. When you hold the bow, there's too much. That first lesson is like, <laughs> there's too much emotional baggage with that. <laughs> Yes. So a piece of paper doesn't have any emotional baggage, so everyone else had to pick a piece of paper up. Oh, Again, notice that like, I'm, I'm, the point of contact is near the fingertip, but I pick up a piece of paper like that. I don't think so. It's weird. You have, I have no control over the piece of paper. I right? yeah. pick it up normally. Don't th make sure you're not thinking that it's a bow because it's just a piece of paper. Take it away and put the stick in between. Let's work on the bow hold away from the frogs because it's just less confusing. Uh -huh. So, okay, I'm just going to put it in there exactly how I had it and then let the other fingers fall down with gravity. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole thing. That's the perfect bow hold. It does that all. Uh, well, I left one thing out, which is pronation, but, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So basically, this is it. You could just try playing that way for a little bit. And then, if you promise to be good, just rewind that exact bow hold to the frog. But don't don't change anything. I don't like. Oh, good. I'll go with my old ways. And don't worry about if you're touching the frog or the little eye or anything like that. Because the bow hold is confusing holding the bow there because you don't know what to do with the leather grip and the frog and right. all that stuff. But the bow hold is about the stick. It's not about the frog. The frog is just necessary to be there to hold the hair away from the stick. I got plenty of leverage between my thumb and, and uh, first finger. I can easily push the stick down to the hair. I don't need I don't need to hike up to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I have the balance uh, and my back fingers against the first. And I have this flexibility which everyone knows you're supposed to have and get away bye bye. Mm -hmm.